Um, today we are also honoured to offer the stage for the announcement of a new award celebrating the life of D Jimmy Jurabji. Jimmy was a pioneer in international harm reduction and a major figure in the movement of, in Asia. And we're also really delighted that, that Jimmy's partner, Dell, Jamset and Shura are here. Thank you, Peter. Thank you very much um, for the opportunity to present the Dobji Award here today on the unceded lands of the Wurundjeri, Wurrung and Bunurong peoples. I also pay my respect to their elders past and present and I thank everyone for attending the final session. Congratulations to you all. Um, it's quite fitting that we follow the Vietnamese experience because Jimmy was very committed to the work that happens in Asia. He died in November 2019. He was a brother, an uncle, a father, and a grandfather to many people in our sector. I first, I first met Jimmy in 1998 at the Sao Paulo Harm Reduction Meeting, just two years after the establishment of the Asian Harm Reduction, Harm Reduction Network. And I'd like to acknowledge Nick for all of the work that you did in supporting the groups of Asian drug users and activists who came together at that meeting in Hobart in 1996 to establish that um, very important network. I was a friend of Jemmy's and a work colleague until his death. Three decades later, the network of Asian people who use drugs continues as the voice for many people who for structural reasons are unable to be in a position to speak about the issues they care about. Jimmy was a key part of the reason why many of these networks were established and why they still exist today. Jimmy mentored and inspired many. He epitomised lived experience and peer education he was truly an inspirational leader in harm reduction, and this award will ensure that Jimmy's legacy to harm reduction and to the rights of people who use drugs is remembered and acknowledged. It's fitting that today, the 19th of April, is actually also the day he married Dell. Um, and it's, as um, Naomi said, Dell and his two children, Jamshi and Sher, are both here to celebrate um, the, um, the acknowledgement of this award, and I am proud to announce that the Burnett Institute, who was the last place for which Jimmy was working and worked for so many years, together with the network of Asian people who use drugs and the international network of people who use drugs, have established this, the, the Dorabji Award into perpetuity. The award will be annually provide scholarships for two people, with lived experience and working in the field of harm reduction to attend a conference of their choice, and at least one of these people will be from Asia. The actual specifics and the timing of the award will be promoted through our harm reduction networks um, and through the networks of people who use drugs, so look out for them, encourage others and yourselves to apply, Thank you very much. So delegates who attended HR 23 um, have created a conference declaration specific to the Australian context. This declaration is intended to align our many voices so we might be more clearly heard when advocating for change. In creating this declaration, we've conducted an online poll and workshops aimed at identifying our collective priorities and developing simple yet powerful language to communicate them. We recognise that not all delegates will have been able to contribute and therefore their voices and perspectives may not be represented. So there will be further opportunity to refine the priority statement, the statements that accompany the declaration. We see this declaration as the start of a conversation that we hope you will all continue. In addition, the HR23 viral hepatitis pre-conference developed statements calling for action for people who use drugs. One, that a global priority, a global priority statement to integrate, integrate hepatitis B into harm reduction and an Australian priority statement about hepatitis C and implementing needle and syringe programs in prisons. These will be circulated to delegates. So I'd like to invite Gabby, a proud Aboriginal woman and harm reduction Victoria board member, to tell us about the conference declaration. Oh, 
Hello. So this is the Harm Reduction International 2023 Australian Conference Declaration. We recognise and celebrate the unique and valuable contribution that people who use drugs make to society. This declaration unites and aligns our many voices. We deserve and demand equitable health and social outcomes for people who use drugs. We recognise and we hold the shared priorities to ensure people who use drugs are permanently resourced to lead and self-determine through genuine inclusion and representation. Dismantle colonial systems and structures, end criminalisation and prohibition of drug use, end stigmatisation, discrimination and racism, ensure equitable access to an individual, oh, so good, now I stuffed it. <laughs> ensure equitable access to an individual choice throughout the full range of health, harm reduction and related services. In advocating for these changes, we recognise the need to ensure the genuine equitable health and human rights for people who use drugs as determined by people who use drugs. Be community led and driven by diverse voices, knowledge and experience of people who use drugs, including indigenous peoples, young people, women, people of colour, people in custodial settings, queer and other marginalised groups. Ensure Indigenous peoples and groups lead the work of decolonisation, including the International Indigenous Drug Policy Alliance and the Black Harm Reduction Network. Our priorities are detailed in the accompanying list of advocacy statements. We commit to continuing to refine our language and understanding when using these statements so that we may be united in advocating for community-led change through our many efforts. Thank you. Fantastic. So, in order to wrap up, I'm going to ask the HRI team to join me on stage, against their will, um, and, and start by telling you a little bit about what it's been like to partner with Harm Reduction Victoria. Um, I cannot thank the team enough for their endless, endless support, day in, day out, their thoughtful conference planning, their partnership, all very much under the leadership of Sione Crawford who is, who is everything we would like to see as a leader in the harm reduction community, somebody who makes space for others, somebody who listens before they speak, um, somebody who has such humility, he won't give me a long bio for him, but you get the gist. <laughs> I'd like to shout out to Harm Reduction Victoria, Sioni, Ben, Nick, Sam, Jane, and the team. Thank you so much for being an incredible conference partner. Um, as I mentioned in the opening, we're really excited to also partner with AVIL, Asham, and Inshu in implementing this conference. So a big shout out to the new AVIL CEO, John Gobai, Charlie, Jeff, L, and the whole team, Nikita, Emma, Jason, and the team at Inshu, and Nadine, Shelley, Brett, and the team at Asham. So I'll take, through, take you through a few now. Local support committee members, including Craig Holloway and Gabby Brunning. The program committees, people from all over the world that dedicated their time to do such an amazing job of help us pull the incredible program together in a really democratic way. The organizations hosting the site visits, the Melbourne Convention Bureau team, Carolyn uh, Vizzo and her team, Shana, John Boy, and the team at the Melbourne Convention and Exhibition Centre have really been so supportive throughout the whole week. Our donors, sponsors, and exhibitors that have enabled us to issue 60 scholarships to get people here from around the world. A big shout out, and get your enthusiasm on for this one, to our volunteers. Please stand up. I can't believe none of you are wearing those orange t-shirts anymore. <laughs> um, 
Thank you to Lee Hertel for leading the medical services with support from Harm Reduction Victoria and CoHealth. It's really important to us that we can talk about drug use and keep each other safe during the conference. Michael Kessler, our media consultant who literally worked around the clock for the past week, and Suchitra Rajagopalan, our communication strategist, and all the incredible work they've done to showcase this conference. We've had great media coverage across Southeast Asia and Australia, so thank you so much to both of them. Connor Ashley and Nigel Brunson, our photographers, the most charming version of paparazzi. <laughs> Eric, Thomas, Milena, and Helena, um, who do our website and design. The Elton John AIDS Foundation for supporting the film festival and the team from Drug Reporter. Joao Sarmento from Crowdcoms, who went above and beyond. Joan and the team at Har Harry the Hira for the beautiful exhibition space. Mickley and Mon, who ran the virtual element of the conference. Watch out for all the videos on YouTube in the coming weeks. Our fantastic founder, Patrick O'Hare. And our board member, Alex Stevens. <laughs> Get a little closer for the last bit of love. Thank you so much to Ruud Ariete and Ailish Brennan for really stepping up and joining our conference team to make it, make it work. And finally, Maddie O'Hare, Lucy O'Hare, our conference director's extraordinaire. Who <laughs> really have the vision for creating a conference that has the values that you know, speak to our heart and mean that we can bring the community together in this way. So thank you so much to everybody. Have a wonderful afternoon.